Oh, Merit. It's the ultimate beauty line for the makeup minimalist. Okay, this is the brand for the woman who wants to look naturally beautiful, but they wanna do it with as few makeup products as possible, and they wanna take as little time as possible. Today, we're gonna try a full face of Merit, okay? I bought a full face of Merit. We are gonna swatch them. We are gonna see how it wears. We're gonna read reviews. We're gonna watch TikToks to see what other people are saying. We're just gonna hang out and have fun. Let's go. Let's get started with some skin prep. So there are two options for skin prep in the Merit line, okay? There's the Great Skin Instant Glow Serum, and there's the Great Skin Priming Moisturizer. So let's talk about this guy first. This is a really lightweight dual phase serum. Now what this is intended to be is a serum that hydrates and provides a lot of glow, like a really healthy glow. When I watch people use this online, their skin really does look beautiful after they used it. One thing that I was worried about this for me is that I have really oily skin, but they say, okay, that this is suitable for all skin types. It's even suitable for acne prone skin. So we'll see how it looks throughout the day. I'll do a check-in at the end of the day to let you see what my skin looks like. I'm worried it's going to make me too shiny, but let's try it out. Okay. So this has a very watery texture. It is not a dense formula at all. It's actually extremely, extremely lightweight. It's so lightweight actually that it, it almost wants to like, well, it does, it wants to run down your hand. Do you see that? It doesn't have any density or viscosity to it whatsoever. So actually maybe this will be really good for more oily skin types, we'll see. Okay, so this is how my skin looks after I applied it. So it does give a glow, it's a very subtle glow. It does actually feel really soft and smooth without feeling overly greasy or overly heavy. So I think this would be a good serum, a first step for someone with dry skin and they can layer their moisturizer on top of it. Or for someone with oily skin, like myself, this could be a good like one and done product to then blend foundation on top of. Now they also have this one that I mentioned, okay? Great Skin Priming Moisturizer. Now I swatched this on myself earlier and this definitely has a much more dense formula to it. You can really see that it's quite hydrating. So I'm gonna skip this step, okay? I wanted to show it to you guys. I wanted you to see what it's like. It's on this hand, it's not on this hand. I just know with my skin type that this is gonna be way too greasy for me, but it does feel very silky and very nice. Okay, now let's move on to their foundation sticks. So they only have one type of complexion product. They don't even have concealers, which is crazy. It's actually called the Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick. And it comes like this. Now this packaging, I think is gorgeous. Like I love this. I think it's really interesting how they want you to kind of micro edit. I think that's what they called micro editing or something like that, your face with this. So you don't need to go in with a foundation and then powder and then concealer and all of this stuff. You just use this product and you just camouflage what needs to be camouflaged and leave what doesn't need to be camouflaged. So I'll go in and camouflage any active breakout that I have because my skin right now is just not in a good place. Now, the really good thing about this is that it is buildable. So I have a lot of hyperpigmentation here. So let's go a little heavier here. It's also hydrating and it is lightweight. I find that you can use it around your eyes without it looking excessively creasy or dry. It blends super well with the 101 by BK Beauty. If you guys have that brush, that's a really viral brush for foundation. If you have that brush, I don't think that you need to buy the Merit, the Merit brush. This one works really well for this formula. See, as you can see, as I stipple it out, it just kind of melts into the skin like butter. It's really nice. So you can build this up as much as you want, right? If you want a fuller coverage, you can put this on the whole face and blend it out like a cream foundation because that's essentially what it is. It's a cream foundation, but you can also use it as a perfecting stick to only edit out the parts of your face that are bothering you like hyperpigmentation or or breakouts or whatever so you can kind of do it how you want the foundation for us mature skin girlies so you don't have to i'm using merit beauty's minimalist complexion stick here it's a buildable coverage it's lightweight and hydrating but i would say it's more of a medium than full coverage however like i said you can build it up 
I have some retinol breakout right now. It does a really good job of covering without looking cakey. You can also use it as a spot treatment. So I have a blemish on my chin here that is literally never going to go away. So I'm using that to spot treat it. If you're really oily, I don't think this is one for you, but my combo to dry girlies, you're going to love it. Doesn't settle into fine lines and gives you a really pretty glow. I hope this helps. Love you. Bye. I would totally agree with this creator. I think this is really, really good for mature skin. I think all of my mature skin gals, all of my mature skin community that I love so much, I think you'll like this because it's easy, it's creamy, it's not too much, it doesn't settle. It is, it is creamy though. So for very oily skin, like my skin, I could see it being problematic throughout the whole day. But I think as long as you go light on it and then you, you set it with a powder, you should be okay. Mary doesn't have a powder, so I'm not gonna set it with a powder today because I really wanna keep this as a full face of Merit only. You know, if I bust out my powder, what's gonna happen is it's gonna change the product and then we won't get a really authentic, honest review. Do you wanna read reviews about this? Cause I know a lot of you are really curious about this. So let me see here. The Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick. Oh, this one is five star. So amazing. I have acne scars, redness, and uneven textured skin. So light coverage products like skin tints aren't enough for me, but also I don't like heavy coverage because I'm over caking my face with layers of thick foundation every day. That's the thing, right? We are all over that now. That is just not the look right now. So I started looking for an everyday foundation concealer that has medium buildable coverage for everyday use. And I tried this. I love the packaging. It's really creamy, easy to use. It's not drying. It gives you such a natural finish and it blends so easily. I use it every day as a foundation base to quickly even out my skin tone and cover imperfections. Then I use my NARS pot concealer to go over any areas that need to be further spot concealed. Because it's a stick, I find that I can really control where I apply it and how much I apply versus a liquid concealer, which takes more time to blend out. Definitely be repurchasing. I will say though that I haven't tried any other foundation sticks, so maybe other products might be comparable. I I have tried many foundation sticks, many, and this one really is really good. I would say that it's it's definitely unique because even though it's a stick, it's very creamy. I think that's what makes it so special and what makes it so different from a lot of the other products that I've tried before. It is just so creamy and blendable and it it has a beautiful finish. Okay, that's, we don't have to beat this to death. It has a beautiful finish. It's so creamy. It's luminous without being overly greasy. I really could see this being amazing for dry skin or even normal combination skin. A little bit, a little bit wet for very oily skin, but I think for the most part, it would be good. Even very oily skin, I think if you're placing it in strategic places, I think you would like it and I could see it setting well. I could see the formula of this setting well, but the finish of it is quite natural. Yeah, the more I look at it, the more I like it. It's so pretty, oh my gosh. Let's move on to the bronze balm. I'm using only Merit Beauty products to create this chic look. Let's start with the complexion stick. This is absolutely gorgeous, you all. It's one of my favorite things from the line. This is the color Dune, is I just kind of draw it on my face, mostly in the center of my face. It's fast and easy. And I take the brush and just buff it into the skin. Such a beautiful formula. It's not thick and cakey, but it gives me the coverage that I need. Then take the bronzing balm, the color clay, same brush, pick up a little bit. I apply it here almost as a bronzer and contour powder, and then across the top of my forehead just to add dimension. I apply it here under the cheekbones a bit, and then I come up to bronze the skin, and then across the forehead for some dimension. Take the flesh balm cheek color in cheeky, same brush, apply this to the cheekbones, and I wanna come up high to lift the face. Just stipple it on for a nice dewy finish. Take the highlighting balm in the color bounce with your middle finger, your favorite finger, and apply this just to the tops of the cheekbones for a slight sheen. Do you see the glow that that's giving? And it looks really natural and subtle. Solo shadow on Nelson and a small brush and smudge this along the upper lash line, just on the outer half of the eyes. Create a really subtle cat eye right here. Other side of the brush and the bronzing stick and put this in the crease just for dimension. Apply the Clean Lash Mascara, tinted lip oil in maple tin. That's a really comfortable formula. And there you go. There's our chic and simple look. Oh, that's my friend Marlena. I just spent the week with her last Last week she's the best she knows everything about product development because she was the creator of makeup geek she's the ceo the creator of makeup geek 
she is a wealth of knowledge. So if she likes this, there is definitely a reason why. Wow, this is really interesting too. This is so different than the Makeup by Mario contouring or bronzing stick. The reason this is different is it's really creamy and it's sheer. So what do they say about it? They say that it's blendable, lightweight, satin finish, multi-use, not orange or streaky. I would agree with all of that. It's definitely satin finish. It's not a matte finish. It doesn't have that heavy texture when you blend it out. It has a bit of a gel. It's like a gel texture, I would say and it leaves a little bit of a shine. I'm not gonna contour my nose with it because I feel like if I do that, I might get a little shiny. And as I say that, I'm literally doing it. I forget it, I'm doing it. We're gonna go all the way here. Okay, let's read reviews while we blend. Bronzer bomb, not worth the purchase. Gabby, two stars. This isn't me. I spell my name G-A-B-I, <laughs> this isn't me. I was really hoping to love the bronzer, blush, and highlighter from Mary because I absolutely love their cream eyeshadow. However, they are definitely not worth the purchase. The formula for all of three is very thin and oily. Just sits on top of your skin and is very wet until it completely wears off in a couple of hours. Also, even before it wears off, the coverage is barely there. I was expecting light coverage, but I don't feel like these products do much at all except moisturize because they're so oily. The colors are pretty, but the formula and overall application is super disappointing. Gabby is not completely off base. They are wet for sure. All of the products have a very wet consistency, all of the face products. And I really think that's because they want that natural glowy, you know, Instagram face look, which is the trend right now. The problem with that look, even though it's so pretty on certain people, it doesn't work on combo to oily skin at all. It doesn't last. It's too wet and sticky and slimy. They almost need like two formulas, right? This formula for dry to normal skin and then something with a little bit less moisture for combination oily skin. I can even see that I'm getting ex like extremely shiny here. Do you guys see that? Because I, d I just have so much oil production. There's good and bad to everything though. I'm really not hating it. I'm not hating it. I think this is a really easy, quick bronzer that you can slap on really quick because it has a little bit more sheerness. The blending is much less intimidating than Makeup by Mario, if I'm being honest. Way less intimidating because it is, for the most part, kind of sheer, you know? Like you can see that there's a sheerness to it. It blends away really fast, but it still leaves you with some color. But some people really do like love this. Like look at Carrie, Carrie G, five stars. This is hands down the best bronzer that I've ever used. I rely on bronzers because I'm very fair. And sometimes I get a little redness in the face. The bronzer cancels that out. This is my second order of the bronzer. It's so easy to apply, it does last. I'm a minimalist when it comes to makeup application. I do not buy products that are meant to not budge from my skin. I'm all about the natural healthy glow and Merit products provide this for me. I highly recommend this bronzer and this brand. See, this is the thing when it comes to knowing your customer. Not everything's gonna be suitable for everyone. It's just not. And this is suitable for this person. This is the Merit customer. You know, the minimalist, the person who wants really quick application, the person who wants to look pretty, but in a completely natural way, not overdone, and the person with not super oily skin. I had to say it, <laughs> had to say it. Let's do blush before we do anything with the brows or the eyes, okay? This one's called the Flush Bomb. I bought the color Rouge because I really wanted that kind of sun-kissed glow. This is really pretty. This is blendable, it's lightweight, has a satin finish. You know how I would describe this? As like watercolor for your face. It's not an opaque acrylic paint. Okay, it's a flush of color that you can see through. It's like watercolor. I love this color. I know a lot of you guys will think this is too red, but I love it. You know what this reminds me of? Like if you were out in the sun a little long as a kid and you get flushed, like you're not sunburned, but you're, you've are you been running a lot and you're in the sun a lot. My kids come inside like that all the time. You know, they've been playing tag with their friends outside and they've been in the sun and they need a glass of water and their little cheeks are all flushed. 
This is that color. It's This is that color in a nutshell. I also think it looks so pretty on your lips. I love this. This is the watercolor of blush. I'm surprisingly liking this brand a lot more than I initially thought I would. I, I, I am, not gonna lie. I actually like it a lot more than I thought. Do you guys wanna see what people think about this? So Raina wrote, I absolutely love this new product. I purchased it on a, on a whim and I'm so happy that I did. The formula is so smooth, just glides onto your skin. The colors are gorgeous, can be worn very sheer and are easily buildable for as much color payoffs as you'd like. For dry aging skin, this is a godsend. It's light but emollient and makes you look lit from within. I was worried that the darker colors wouldn't be complimentary to my skin tone, but I think any skin tone could get away with any of the colors. You just need to adjust the application to suit you. 10 out of 10 would recommend to anyone and everyone. One. most likely going to buy more colors not gonna lie that's because it's the watercolor of blush <laughs> that's why all the colors suit everyone because your skin shines through it so it's never too opaque and too dense however we have this person here sue me absolutely god awful i wanted to try this as it was being advertised on my social media accounts the people who were sponsored by merit made it seem like the best cream blush ever i can't believe i spent so much on something that feels so greasy and looks patchy very unflattering Please don't go splurge on this. It's not worth it. Get something from your local drugstore instead. Big regret, very disappointed. There are a lot of negative reviews that it doesn't last and a lot of neg negative reviews that the products are too oily. And those are valid reviews. I am really liking the product so far. I know the type of woman who's going to love this product, right? The mature woman with drier skin, I think is gonna love this product or a younger woman who wants to look very natural, who also has dry skin, they're gonna love this product, but it is limited. It's, it's, I, I wouldn't say this is for everyone. Okay, let's move on to Brow 1990. I actually talked about this in my other video where I talked about all of my favorite products for looking naturally beautiful. Something that I love about it, you get your spoolie on one side, which is great, but the pen is so skinny. So it's a gel formula, it's super creamy, and it's so skinny, so if you want, you can easily draw hair like strokes, but you can also shade. I show the differences often and I still feel like I need to make another video on it because some people like an airier brow that has more holes through it where you can see strokes, but you can also see skin. But then some people like more of a shaded effect like what I created now. And then some people like a hybrid where you get the shading on the tails, right? Mids to tails, and then you get feather like strokes in the center or in the front of the brow. So this brow pencil will allow you to, to do all three of those things quite well. So I love that. It's, it's very versatile and it's very good. Something else that I really am enjoying about it is that the brown color isn't too warm. Sometimes I find browns can have like a red base to them in a lot of the brands and a lot of the lines like e.l.f. is like that. The brown's very red based. This is more of like a neutral brown, which I actually really appreciate because most people with dark brown hair, this is color dark brown. Most people with this hair color, they don't have that much warmth. So sometimes the brows look off because there's too much red in them. The next brow product they have that's amazing, I'll show you on one brow first. It's the Volumizing Pomade. So this is really nice because it's super easy to use. I often use this on its own completely when I am very lazy. Like when I'm with my kids, I literally can't be bothered to shade, like forget it. I'll throw this on, it will give me a little bit of density before walking out the door without being overpowering. It's not sticky, it's not crazy high hold, it's not like Anastasia Beverly Hills brow freeze. It's a much lighter hold. I also find the color not too overbearing. Sometimes when you use these colored brow mascaras, like it's, it looks kind of weird because it's too much. I really feel like this is kind of the perfect amount. And you guys can see like, look at how full my brow looks here compared to here. Like here it's so hollow and empty compared to here, right? And you saw in real time, it doesn't take a long, a long time at all to do. So I love this, right? Flexible hold, adds color and volume, fluffy, but also natural looking. This is a great product. The two brow products by Merit are top of the line in my opinion. They are really exceptional. They're 
some of my favorite brow products on the market right now. And that says a lot because I'm really picky with brow products. Is Merit Beauty's Brow 1990 and 1980. I prefer to keep my eyebrows on the more natural side by just defining them a little bit. And this is the best product for that. The gel texture provides a really smooth application process. Not only is it long lasting, but it nourishes your brow hairs and it's amazing. Let's move on to the solo shadow. So I have this in two colors. In another video, I already showed you the color mid-century, which is this kind of medium toned brown. This is amazing. This is cream to powder. It is absolutely beautiful. It's creamy. It's easy to use. It's not patchy and I don't find it creasy either. I wanted to try Viper. I wanted to try this green really badly and I want to show you guys what they do on the website. So they show you three different ways to, to use it, which I think is really smart. You can get a brush for it with a tiny little tip and then a fluffier side. So this is a pencil brush, basically. You can use it like a shadow. So you can use this across the entire lid by dabbing like this, okay? If you do that, you're gonna get a very soft wash of color. You can use the brush and apply it on the entire lid and you're gonna get more of a smoky eye or you can apply it with this as an actual little wing. I always, feel more comfortable doing a tiny little wing. That's just my look. But I feel like if I do that for this video, it's not gonna be really representative of what Merit has to offer because we won't know if it creases, we won't know how it wears over the day as much as if I do a bit of like a smoky eye. So we're gonna do a smoky eye with it, okay? If you guys want me to make a video where I show the Merit cream eyeshadows and I show you different ways to tweak and wear them so that there are different shapes, let me know. I would be happy to make that later. But for the sake of this video, let's just do a full kind of rounded smoky eye with it because then we can see if it creases. The only thing that is really killing me other than the fact that I don't normally wear my eyeshadow like this because I don't like darkness around my eyes, but what's kind of killing me is that I'm so shiny. I'm so shiny. It's like verging on sweaty as much as i want to absolutely love these products because i love this look on other people it isn't great for oily skin okay the reviews we read that said that it wasn't great for oily skin is right and i bet the negative re reviews are coming from people with oily skin because if you look at it on oily skin it's just too much but if you look at it on dry skin or normal skin it actually is beautiful that's the thing not everything is for everyone everyone's skin is so different this isn't great for my skin type it really really isn't but that doesn't mean it's not going to be great for your skin type okay so when you're watching this review take it for what it is okay don't get discouraged or think that the line is garbage it's not it clearly is very high quality it's just that it's so wet for someone whose skin is as oily as mine. Okay, now we have to talk about this. This is the Clean Lash Mascara. I did not have high hopes for it. Whenever there are minimalist brands like this that make mascaras, I always think they're terrible. <laughs> this is actually an amazing mascara. This is a tubing mascara. So tubing mascara is quite different than regular mascaras. Like the formula of tubing mascaras are quite different. The really, really cool thing about them is it adheres to the lashes and makes a little tube around every single lash. And because it does that, it's very easy to remove because when you add water to it, the tubes will slide off and you'll see like little tubes on your cheek. So it's easy to remove, but what makes it super, super cool is it does not smudge at all. I have worn this multiple days, multiple situations, in the heat, in the humidity, and it will not smudge. They're not kidding when they say that. I also have extremely thin lashes. I find it does an amazing job of bulking them up and lifting them. This is really good. This is really good. I just bought the Armez mascara for my luxury video, which a lot of you guys really hated. I was so sad about that. <laughs> I thought that video was gonna be so fun to make and you guys would get a laugh out of it and it'd be fun unboxing those things together. But yeah, you guys just did not like that video at all. There was a lot of hate on that video and yeah, a lot of you didn't even watch it and that's okay, you know, you live and learn. But regardless of that, the reason I'm telling you that story is because the Hermes mascara, that's so bloody, it's so expensive, like outrageously expensive 
it sucks. It's smudgy, it gets all over my cheeks, it does not lift. It's almost like the formula is too natural, like you can't see any results from it but it smudges. So it's like, you're not getting the payoff of the volume, but you're getting the smudging. It's so annoying. This one's a hundred times better than that. Let's use this. So this is the Merit lipstick. The packaging for this is beautiful. It's kind of got a heavier packaging. The design is gorgeous. It feels very luxe and upscale. Because I was doing this green eye, I chose the color slip, which was more of like a nude or a neutral. The formula itself is really pretty. It's creamy and nice pigmented, but not too much. I just found that the color selection, again, wasn't fantastic. I think because this is a minimalist line, it is like very minimalist. Like there aren't a lot of colors, there aren't a lot of selection. Another thing that drives me crazy is they don't have a lip liner, and I don't even know how to do lips without lip liner. I'm just gonna show you. So this is it, okay? It looks nice, but then if I take my Huda Beauty Lip Contour in Warm Brown, and I just strategically line the cupid's bow and the bottom you know the center of the bottom lip you're gonna see how much how much better it looks okay watch this this is my lip with lip liner do you see how much like juicier and more balanced and defined my lip looks but it's the makeup artist in me <laughs> i am not merit's target audience at all i'm not, i am not a makeup minimalist at all that's why some things don't speak to me because i'm just not really their customer but with that said I do have an, like a serious appreciation for some of these products and for the, the vibe that they do promote. Okay, let's mascara the bottom lashes. If you struggle with using mascara on your bottom lashes because of smudging, get this mascara. Guys, this mascara literally will not smudge. It's awesome. While we finish this up, watch this reel. I thought it was so pretty how she did her eyes. She really inspired my look today. I love your eyeshadow palettes. I'm not even hitting pan on one eyeshadow. Merit came out with Soul Shadow, which is a perfect matte eyeshadow that is buildable, goes on cream, and dries down to a matte wash of color. It's long wearing and won't crease or fade throughout the day. You can use your finger or use the brush in to, to create sharp lines or buffing out the shadow. Shop Merit using the link in my bio. Every first Merit order ships with Merit's signature bag, and all orders over $40 get free shipping. Okay, we gotta stop this for a minute. I just wanna say one more thing. I'm looking to see if this is disclosed as an ad because it's really important that we always disclose our ads, right? I do sponsored content, I do sponsored reels, I do sponsored videos always with products that I love and believe in. I'm like absolutely psychotic about it, but I get why creators would do it. It funds your channel. You know, if you're creating content all day and your audience isn't paying for your content, you have to fund your channel somehow or else you'd have to get a job and you wouldn't be able to find time to make content, right? So it's a business like any other business, I get it. But this isn't disclosed as an ad and I'm absolutely certain it is an ad because of the signature bag thing. They're so about the signature bag thing. They talk about it constantly and like, Last, I think it was two winters ago, actually, I got asked to do a sponsorship with Merit and I did because I liked the products. It was right around Christmas. They had this cool, like really nude eye, red lip thing. It was like a kit and I loved it. So I was like, yeah, I tried it. I loved it. I'm like, let's do it. I did the video and the talking points that they had are super specific, which I always find it so red flaggy when a company has such specific talking points because it takes away the freedom of the creator to talk to their audience in the way they know makes sense for their audience. You know, I, I don't want to be like a gigantic infomercial for you guys. Like that's one way for you to not trust me, right? If I'd suddenly sell out and everything I say is from a script. So they are really, their talking points are specific. Fine, I get it. They're investing in creators. So they need to get their point across, but they're so hardcore about the bag thing. Listen, you buy the products the first time you get the bag. We get it, we get it. Like, I like the bag, the bag is great, but like, what's with the like heavy, like, even Andrea, as you saw, I'm certain they probably asked for, I mean, I'm not certain, I don't know her, but they must have asked for revisions on that video because out of nowhere, it's like, every product comes with a signature bag at the very end of the reel. I'm like, give me a freaking break with this freaking bag. Like, watch watch the reviews. I'm not kidding, watch the reels. They all talk about this freaking bag. Like, 
Why does Merritt think we want this bag so bad? It's not that exciting, it's just a bag. Please disagree with me if you think it's that exciting. I just, the talking points thing, like the longer I do this, the more the talking points thing bugs me, man. Like the talking points, it's like, just let the creator speak in their own voice and show their products in the way that they want because there's a reason creators have a following. It's because people trust them and because they have knowledge to share and they're executing it in a way that's connecting with people and making people feel understood and making people feel like they're relatable to them. So then when you have these points like, and blah, 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 and the talking, and the, the bag, and it's just, it comes off so phony, doesn't it? Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry I'm like unhinged. Okay, this is the final look. What do you guys think? Do you think it's pretty? This is how my makeup looks in studio lighting. This is how my makeup looks immediately after in natural lighting. And this is how my makeup looks eight hours later. So I'm feeling a little sad about how this wore. I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little sad. And it's not the skin, okay? I have super oily skin. It is not realistic for me to expect a foundation to last all day on my skin, especially because this foundation just isn't for my skin type. It's not for super oily skin. Cream foundations are not for super oily skin. So like this amount of shine, it's fine. I don't even think it looks that bad. Like it's a little sweaty looking, it's a little greasy, but that's my skin. That's, that's a my skin issue, not a product issue. But what I'm really super bummed about is the um, cream shadow. Oh, the cream shadow didn't wear well at all. Mascara, phenomenal. Look, it's still lifted. My lashes are still lifted. There's absolutely no smudging. Even if we zoom right in, there is no smudging under my eyes at all. But the cream shadow is looking really bad. And the crazy thing is that I've used this cream shadow before. I love the Merit Solo shadow, but I only ever used it in the tone mid-century. And mid-century is such a natural brown. It's pretty close to my skin color, just a little bit deeper. So it adds a little bit of shading. So when I wear this color, it doesn't really matter if it creases, like you can't tell because it sort of just blends away, but it's so natural that it, it doesn't look obvious. Whereas this one, because it's a more dramatic pigmented shade the creasing is guys the creasing is bad bad the cheek too the cheek is pretty much gone and the bronzer is pretty much gone the bad reviews about it not lasting they're valid they're absolutely valid this isn't a product that lasts for a long time with that said though it is such a natural product, such an easy to wear product. If you're looking for long lasting, bulletproof makeup, this isn't the brand. This isn't the brand. This isn't the brand, okay? But if you're a very minimalist, easygoing, natural gal where the makeup doesn't speak for you, it's not a statement for you, it's just a little enhancing, a little tweaking, a little color, a little blush, and out the door you go and you're happy with that and you don't mind if it fades, then I actually do love this brand. I, I, I actually think this is really nice. It's hard for me to give such a direct opinion about it because I know exactly who this brand is for. It's not really for the people that are like me, that are massive makeup lovers, but it's for a lot of my friends, you know, who are moms, they live in the suburbs, they wanna put something on quickly and feel pretty. And it doesn't matter if it's gonna stay flawless for 12 hours. It doesn't matter if it's gonna make a statement or even be hugely enhancing. They just wanna look a little better really quickly. You know, that's what this brand is. That's who this brand is for. And there's nothing wrong with that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, then you're definitely a part of my glam family. So leave me a strawberry emoji in the comment section below so we can confuse the heck out of everyone that doesn't know why there's strawberry emojis on the comment section. This video's over.